Hey guys, it's Bub here. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tiny11 Builder. Now, we have taken a look at this in the past. However, this is the newly released version that was actually released yesterday. This is one script, one click, and all is good to go. So this will actually let you build your own version of Tiny11 instead of downloading a pre-made ISO. This provides a lot of benefits including peace of mind for those who are worried that the ISOs compiled you know are bad uh, but additionally it also allows you to use any build of Windows so previously it had to be a specific version but now you can use it on any release for any language or architecture so we can use things like arm 64 we can make a tiny 11 version for arm 64 and all kinds of fun things so, with that being said, I have two files here on this virtual machine that we're going to use to create the ISO. I have just the standard Windows 11 23H2 English that I downloaded from the Microsoft website. And as we can see, this is 6.6 gigabytes. Of course, naturally, Windows is freezing up right here and taking forever to do what I want. Um, let's unblock that. But yeah, 6.34 gigabytes, that's a big ISO. And then we actually have the script. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to follow the directions here. We are going to mount the image. So we want to mount this just like that. And then what we're going to do is we need to set our execution policy for PowerShell to unrestricted. So I'm going to go ahead and open PowerShell, not PowerShell IAC, but just regular PowerShell, and then set the execution policy to unrestricted. This will allow us to actually run that script, and then we should be good to go. So now I'm going to go to here. Of course, it doesn't let us take the whole path. I want to go ahead and copy this whole path. And then we're going to run the dot slash tiny 11 maker dot PS one. And we're going to allow it to run. Welcome to the tiny 11 image creator. Okay, this is the one it's mounted on. It's E because D is the ISO that's actually in this virtual machine right now. So if I were to let's say disconnect the DVD drive. Yeah, there we go. So our Windows ISO is mounted on E. So we only want to put the letter no colon. And then it's going to take a look at the, the Windows image. And then we can select what the SKU that we want the image to be based on. So I'm going to pick Windows 11 Pro when it loads, but I would assume it's going to take a little bit to actually copy the image over because Windows has become so gigantic over the past few years. All right, so now we can pick a version. I'm gonna use, like I said, Windows 11 Pro, and that is index number six. And there we go. It is going to create the tiny 11 ISO for us right now. And if you're wondering about the build number, this is an insider build that we took a look at last video um, because I just didn't wanna make a new virtual machine for this. So we're using, we're using a different build of Windows to actually create this version of Tiny11. All right, and here we go. So it is actually completed. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of the script. It has created this file called Tiny11 that has a disk size of 5.5 gigs. Um, looks like the insider build is uh, kind of glitching right now. Um, but OK, what we're going to go ahead and do is shut down this virtual machine, and then we are going to um, actually just overwrite this existing virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the ISO we just created, which for anyone wondering, I did copy it out of the virtual machine before I actually shut it down. So we're going to go ahead and just install this ISO and make sure that it really did transform. So we're going to go ahead and have to boot into the BIOS here, select the CD-ROM drive, and go ahead and boot into Tiny11. I am also curious to see if it disabled the secure boot requirements, the TPM requirements, all of that stuff, which quite honestly I think is a scam because Windows obviously doesn't require them if you can bypass it. But hey, Windows, they just want you to buy a new computer um, so they get more money. Let's go ahead and get booted into this ISO here and then we'll take a look at the installer. All right, Windows, continue continue and because I'm just overriding the virtual machine I already had we're gonna go ahead and delete all these partitions and next and here we go we are installing Windows 11 or tiny 11 the ISO we just compiled all right and here we are inside of the out-of-box experience for the tiny 11 ISO that we compiled 
I'm excited to see. <clears throat> I assume this would be pretty much identical to what you would typically download, but we're not going to dive too deep into it. I just want to take a brief look around. Like I said, I'm not going to go into like my full OS review mode. I just want to see how similar this is to the actual Tiny 11. And my other question, if NT Dev is watching this, is what does this do for the Tiny 11 project? Because now we've given anyone the ability to create their own ISO and the ability to use it on any version of Windows, whether it's ARM, whether it's regular x86-64, any build. So does this mean that Tiny 11 ISOs will no longer be released because you can make your own now? Or, you know, what does this look like for the future of the Tiny 11 project? All right, let's go ahead and name this Tiny 11. We don't need a password. We're just going to go ahead and skip right over that. Uh, we'll go with the default privacy settings because we don't, again, need anything that special. Um, and then it should hopefully very soon bring us into the desktop. As I mentioned earlier, the one thing I really like about this is you know exactly what you're getting. Whatever ISO you throw into the Tiny11 Builder is pretty much what you're going to get out with the tweaks made. So you're, you really know that you're getting a clean version. And you can go into the PowerShell script and inspect it to make sure that it's not injecting anything. I personally trust it, but if you're one of those people that thinks Tiny11 contains viruses, this is a great way to get around that. You know, it can really prove that, hey, Tiny11 is not malicious at all. All right, and here we are. And as expected, this is pretty much bare bones Tiny11, exactly what you would expect right out of the box. We're using about 11 gigabytes of space, which is typically what we'd see with Tiny11. So that being said, this was the latest version of Tiny11 Builder. Definitely let, let me know what you think in the comments below and what this means for the future of Tiny11. Will it mean that people are on their own to create their own ISOs or will NT Dev continue to pump out their own ISOs? With that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe for new around here as you all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.